Okay, so I'm happy to introduce Alex Lupton. She's a dental assistant with 24 years of experience, and she was my dental assistant 20 years ago, so I know how fantastic she is. She has a lot of experience. She's been an office manager. She's worked in dental sales. She's even lectured to graduating dental hygienists, and she's also a mom, and she is a certified strong fit instructor for kettlebell weight training. And currently, she is supporting the dental community with administrative help and also clinically. And she is here to talk to us about the top 10 tips for dental assistants and then the top 10 tips for the front desk reception staff. So, Alex, tell us the top 10 tips for dental assistants. Well, uh, for me, um, I always start off with the bite wings because... No, I've, I've said this catch line a lot of times. I've done everything dental, but dentistry. So to me, uh, x-rays was really a big contributor to the whole plan, the diagnostic. It starts with the bite wing. And so, you know, I have little tricks where, you know, with the red XCP uh, handle is the one that you choose to use it. If you go flush with it, generally, you're going to have uh, your overlap. So really uh, understand what you're trying to capture. Um practice, you know, really, this is one of the tools or um, diagnostic tools that you're providing your doctor, and really ultimately supporting that patient. So get proficient, ask your colleagues, um, you know, if you need tips, um, I still like the bite, uh, bite wing tab, I find it still gives me the best um, results. I'm not big on the arms because I find that they they don't contour with the face. So, you know, so I still, you know, <laughs> to this day, if I get a good bite wing, it's like a score. This <laughs> is a proficiency that I feel is really important. And that will also segue to the impressions. Those are the two areas you're really clinically supporting uh, your doctor and your patients by doing your best to make sure that there isn't redos. You know, impressions is, is a big one. Um, you want to make it smooth, you know, take your time and practice. I think it just takes time and, you know, and don't rush through it. Uh, you know, uh, we have great materials out there that now change colors. So it really gives you a good pace of time. But these are the two areas that you're really the part of that clinical um, uh, team where you're really part of that treatment plan and diagnostics. So it's really important. Um, That's good. Do you have any tips on how to take good bite wings? Uh, Instead of being flush with the XCP ring? So with the red one, I always say uh, angle it 10, 10, to 10 degrees, 10 to 15 degrees. If you go flush with that red uh, bite wing XCP arm, I found that every time you're going to overlap. And I shared this with other, you know, hygienists and assistants. And when they do actually just move it just slightly, just slightly off that parallel with that cone or with that ring, um, perfect. So I still... I, I still, regardless what device I use, contour with the face, visualize where that alignment is and parallel with that alignment. So it's a hard one because it's a visual thing, but when you are using those tools, it's don't rely on them always. You know, that little 10 degree difference might make a world of difference to your results. And especially for those assistants that are continuously getting that overlap and not really understanding, change your angle just by 10 degrees. Good tip. And how about impressions? How do we get rid of all those bubbles? <laughs> you know, uh, I still like to tap, like if you're, if I'm doing the pour up, I tap, 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 and, you know, milky smooth, take your time, do little batches, uh, you know, pour your, a lot of times we want to do the whole thing, base and the, uh, the, the actual teeth, um, you know, start off like old school, start off with a more, uh, you know, liquefied uh, solution for you or, or cement, not so thick, get it in there. I pour it. What I usually do is I pour it down and I pour it out. Mm. So I'm lining the teeth first and then I put my true pour in. Okay. Let it set and then I make my base separately completely. Um, as for the actual impressions, it's with it good. <laughs> <laughs> good. It's with it good and get a, yeah it's a lot of practice but it's you can't compromise or it's never don't ever settle for it's good enough I think that's a lot of the time it's good enough it got the job done it's not because usually you're doing it twice good thank you I like it with it so number one is bite wings number two is impressions what's number three so I had uh, managing the schedule a lot of the times you know it's uh, 
who's whose schedule is it? It's it's the team schedule, and everybody has the different roles. But really, truly, the assistant is the floor float. You know, she's she's really dictating that, uh, or her her or him, I should say, um, is dictating the flow of the day. So I have, you know, I generally always take a look at the schedule, memorize it, know when your patient's coming. Have a some kind of uh, clock, uh, kind of in in your in your possession, either in the room or on your hand, and sometimes give your doctor signals that we gotta go. There's the next patient. There's a, a, there's a subtle way of communicating, but you really are in control of that schedule. You're managing uh, those patients co- coming in and coming out. And, you know, and even managing your schedule for yourself. When can I do X, Y, and Z? Um, I know right now with COVID, it's really hard to, to leave the room, but there was always those pocket of times that this is a good time to sterilize, uh, to put your stuff through the sterilizer. I know some offices have a float, some do not. So it's just a matter, a matter of um, really managing your schedule and knowing where the right time to do things. So That's it's, good. It's, mm-hmm. Because I know the dentist is so focused on the dentistry and we have our loops on, we can't even look up to look at the clock. So that's great. That's right. That's right. That's right. And number four, what's that tip? Well, it's, it's engagement with the patient upon seating and screening the patient. Uh, um, I was talking to a good friend of mine and she's like, you know, you guys really entertain the patient. And it's so true because how many times, you know, sometimes at the recall, especially at the recall, a doctor leaves, you're, you're left, with, left with a patient. And I find that, you know, if the patient's really uh, engaging, you can have great conversations. Um, and, uh, but generally on seating, that's really your first engagement. And I find that as a good opportunity to really screen the patient. So, so you're, how was your day? How are you feeling? What have you done today? So you can really do it subtly without it really being a medical review. You mm-hmm. all do the medical. I like to also prep my docs for what's happening, how the patient's feeling, and not just mm. in of um, medical. What are, how are you feeling that day? As we all know, most yes. patients love coming to the dentist <laughs> and I let you know as a clinician what you're getting yourself into are you having a patient that ha- is having a bad day mm-hmm. they, they're they're you know don't talk to them just yeah. don't talk to them. or are they feeling more anxious so mm-hmm. so that's where you're you're you, upon seating you're really engaging you're really understanding where that patient's at before you proceed and you can really kind of uh, give your p- uh, doctor a little heads up of what's what's happening with that patient I like that. I like you guys are the warm up act and we're yeah. the main event. <laughs> and, and again, we really rely on dental assistants to help with patient management so we can focus on the dentistry. So that's a really good tip. Right. So number five. So it, with again, because uh, I am not a shy person, as you could tell, I, I like to chat. So I will chat with a patient and a couple of things that, you know, um, I like to always uh, provide is a little bit additional patient education. And the reason why I say this, because there is also the level of intimidation with some of your patients. You know, they see a doctor back in the day was a la- white lab coat and they were, everything was fine. It didn't hurt. They told you everything you want to hear because they're not going to, first of all, insult you by saying that was uncomfortable. I didn't like it. Um, so they're more likely to have an honest conversation when you leave with me. Mm-hmm. And so that was always a good opportunity for me to, do you understand? Mm. And ask that patient, do they understand with what's happening? Why the doctor said what they said, why come in every four, uh, four months for hygiene, because that was something that they was, you know, diagnosed for them as a better treatment, whatever that was. And I was always surprised how many times they didn't. Wow. And it would be like, uh, you know, for, I have two little tricks. So for um, enamel, people that are like abrasive brushers, uh, you know, and they don't understand. Well, and I always used to say, think of your enamel as a very expensive paint job on your Porsche. (laughs) Would you crack it with a uh, a bristle pad or a chamois? Yeah. So then we talk about how thorough cleaning and gentle approach to educate them in that way. when it was to do with decay, what does that mean? What does that mean? It's close to the nerve. I use the analogy of an apple. You know, mm. if you bruise the 
cut it out, still eat it. It's good. If that uh, rot or that bruise goes right to the core, it's in bad shape. You might not mm. so visualize of something that is common in their, in their world to, oh, and you know, when you get that, oh, I get it. Um, mm. I used to sometimes with Dr. Tam back in the day. And I think mm -hmm. this is where it started. And she'd come back and like, ready to go. And yes. And I felt like a little sense of um, pride that there was a le level of like, I kind of helped you. Because they yeah. did the or what, and even though the explanation was perfect, yes, um, it's just the nerves. Because my ex husband was like that. He smiled. I called. <laughs> I used him in presentations over the years. <laughs> Bobblehead patient. The one nodding, <laughs> yes, and they're smiling and they're nodding at you like they are getting everything you're saying. And he was typical of this. The second the pit doctor would walk out, what did they say? <laughs> he, heard, he heard nothing. <laughs> so I used to have to come to his appointments for that exact reason. Yeah. Because, um, you know, he would just, and but he was hyper in the bobblehead of like agreeing with the doctor. And that's it's sometimes scary because, you know, these are the patients that later on think about what you've done yes. and have a, a, a concern. And yet, yeah. I'm so agreeing to everything you're saying. No, so I like that. I noticed as well that patients are much more comfortable speaking to the staff rather than the dentist. And I really like the analogy of the apple. <laughs> yeah, and every patient's different. There are some patients that yes. talk to the and only the doctor. But mm. so that's you're engaging with them. You're at the beginning to kind of sense them out. Then you can educate. Sometimes I yeah. say anything. Yeah. That, no, it's not the patient to do so with. And you also had a tip about flossing. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> flossing, flossing. So we spend a lot of time educating the patient about brushing and we show them how to do it on the teeth models and we tell them how frequently to do it. But no one ever talks about where to place the pants, the, like the floss on your hands. And this was actually a tip I got years ago. So a lot of my tips came from someone else mm -hmm. over the years collected. And and I struggled with the same thing because I have uh, bigger hands. And um, a lot of the times we take our floss and we wrap it on our fingers and we try to floss. The problem is you're trying to get four fingers into your mouth. The key is your middle finger. It's, uh, it's useful for other things. Um, so you wrap the floss here. So you have the string along. And then you have these fingers to guide you. I don't have a piece of floss on me to demonstrate, but, but you could visualize. So it's on your middle finger, and then you have two fingers you're placing in the mouth with that string. So I, I find that the, that is a big eureka when I, you know, the doctor leaves and says, can you kind of go over flossing with the patient? They, they've seen the hug. They understand. So you mm -hmm. still, you know, go over the, you're hugging the, the tooth, you're going under the gingiva, you're not snapping in it because you Cut the cut the gum, or you know, um, or give it a little bit of a uh, like a bar, um, because that happens too. You know, they just chew. Yeah, and, and it, why, that's why. Like, I'm not against the uh, the picks and the mm -hmm. disposal, but are they really hugging that too, yeah. or snapping it? I like that. Like, since we're giving the patient toothbrush and floss, open it up. You know. Hold a mirror and, up and have them show you how, how they do it. And if they're doing it incorrectly, correct them. And do it in the patient's mouth, yes. Majority patients, it's a eureka moment when I show them the other placement. Like, yes. Oh, I, I can't. <laughs> and that's why everybody's like, and then they'll, they'll uh, actually confess. And it's like, well, I don't really floss my back teeth. I only do the front. Yeah, because, because they have so many fingers in the mouth. Thank you. So number six, treatment plan support. Uh, treatment plan support. So I kind of reviewed of uh, how I kind of support the treatment plan by asking those questions of like, do you understand, um, you know, and again, you know, having that like conversation uh, with the patient, sometimes when the intimidation of the clinicians are gone um, and, you know, really kind of, the, well, this is what's the priority. And you're really just reviewing the same treatment plan with a different hand. So hmm. you're not changing anything. It's just, you're really... Do you understand all the steps? Are you comfortable with the steps? This is what's going to take place. This is how long this appointment is going to be. Because a lot of the times, those are the little details too. How mm -hmm. long am I? 
it for? How long do I wait? And sometimes that gets lost in the treatment plan. Yes. You know, because I have worked both front and back, you know, that surprise of like, oh, I didn't realize I had to mm -hmm. have a number of appointments or this would take so long. So that's where you're supporting the treatment. Do you understand what's happening? This is the priority of your treatment plan. And this is how long it should take place. And, you know, this is where you're supporting on a more layman's terms, maybe with the patient kind of uh, on their level of like, I get it. This sucks. You're here. And especially if it's an extensive one, but we're going to get through this and it's going to be one step at a time because as you know, you've done this so many times mm -hmm. when the plan, that patient is overwhelmed. Wow. Yes. And so it's like, it's okay. This is normal. It's been a while. It's like, you know, my other analogy, it's like your car, you got to bring it in every six months, but mm -hmm. if you wait, it goes tick, tick, it's usually a big job. So yes. back to, you know, you, you need to be part of your own kind of maintenance. And this is That's why we good. And then you go back to why we need to see you on a more regular basis. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I do, I do notice that it's the staff that help with, with that treatment plan acceptance and also informed consent yeah. because they're much more comfortable speaking to the staff. And I like the car analogy. That's good. <laughs> okay. okay, number seven. Communication with your DDS. Ask questions. Um, you know, a lot of the times, and I've observed this, there's a level of silence um, from either both the assistant or the doctor. Um, and in my practice, I, I managed an office and great assistant, great doctor, they weren't talking. And so then assumptions come into play. And while well, she's not doing, we're not mind readers either way. Mm -hmm. So I find like I like to, you're almost like interviewing your doctor in a sense. What would you like? How would you like this to be approached? Ask those questions. What would you like? I see that we're scheduled for this. I like the, I, for me, it's always been the dentistry that is not like typical. Like, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. And ask those questions. What materials are going to use? Get yourself organized. There's nothing more eerie to me if those questions being asked in front of that patient. Because I always put myself in the shoes of the patient. Would I want to hear this? Mm. Because I don't want, I don't want ever a patient that is sitting there ever to feel that there's a level of not a confidence between the team, mm -hmm. not an understanding. You know, you're coming at them with a drill. They're already anxious. And now there's all these, what do you need questions? Mm -hmm. Those are things that, you know, are super important to, to really communicate with your doctors of what are you going to use? I see there's something different in the schedule. Is that the regular cement you're going to use? And mm -hmm. don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, it, it might be a silly question. Well, you know, but okay, I just want to review that with you again. So I think that that's a real important thing is to ask questions of your doctor and really understand their needs because how can you assess your doctor adequately if you don't really truly understand all their needs yeah that's good and I think it's incumbent upon the dentist also to make it a, a comfortable environment for the assistant to ask and even prompt the dental assistant and say things like okay we're using a new material do you want to go over how to use it and things right. like that right right exactly like review these things and it's not yeah. always like something new but sometimes just yeah. you know Ask questions. I ask yeah. questions all the time. You'll get your answers. It's better than assuming. Yeah, that's great. And I love number eight. Oh, anticipating <laughs> our next move. Um, actually, I was talking to another dentist friend of mine, and uh, you know, because this has been always a struggle. Sometimes anticipating, and her assistant makes a game out of it. Thought that was the coolest thing I've ever heard, because. There's nothing better. And I saw even a meme, so I might post it one day. Um, it's like, there you go. <laughs> when the doctor says, I need, and you're like, there you go. <laughs> and there's so, so it does become, uh, you know, like almost like a, a dance, in my yes. opinion. Um, but you have to be watching. You have to care. Mm -hmm. you, it's observe, observation. It's, you know, uh, we've all seen assistants that disengage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if they're disengaged, you're never going to get this uh, right. Uh, so it's really watching, you know, I kind of like, oh, I see that saliva. I know you're going to, ah, I got you. Yeah. So it's really kind of, you're part of that dentistry as an assistant. Mm -hmm. Really important job. I don't like it downplayed. I don't like the word, I'm just the assistant. You are mm -hmm. 
team and you are the third arm of that doctor without you there they're slow <laughs> and they're going to fall behind so you're really first of all creating a level of pace for not just your doctor also that patient remember ultimately that patient comfort for me has always been really important so let's move this along for you let's not redo this three times because I wasn't paying attention that saliva is getting into your composite. So mm -hmm. be engaged, anticipate the next move, be almost robotic with each other, but it is like a dance and it can be fun. And yeah. I love, you know, make a game out of it because, you know, I know when I assist when they ask for something and it's already in my hand, it's like, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't even, don't even say it. It's there. <laughs> it's, it's a great compliment when at the end of the appointment, the assistant's like, wow, you guys are a great team. You didn't even have to say anything to each other. It's the best. It is the best. <laughs> And, and look at how confident then that patient is yeah. in the experience, yeah. right? Because, you know, we all have friends and sometimes, you know, we I've heard that like, oh, doctor was great, but uh, I don't think that a system worked really well with, with mm. her. Or, and then I've heard this. I ask questions. Also, my friends have their experiences. Mm. Oh, well. So I want this experience for that patient to be great. And that's anticipating the next move and being Good. part present in that procedure. That's great. And number nine. Uh, patient safety. So again, um, that's one thing. I worked with an oral surgeon for a while. So that was a big thing that I learned from him was how important it was for me to look at everything of, of the body, the hand twitching, the squeezing of the fist. Um, and I've seen this many times where I could tell the patients in pain before they say anything or they'll hold on and I'll stop you. I'll say, are you okay? Are you feeling pain? And then the doctor again, because you're so with mm -hmm. your in the procedure, you're not looking at these the signs. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, uh, the patient safety is very important. And this is, again, why I think this is such an important role. Uh, you know, not just an assistant. You are there for their safety. You are there with that suction. So if that piece of pops off, whatever that was, composite, if it was a pin, it's flying, you're catching it. And, my, you know, at least the doctors I've worked with, they're really, I guess I, I'm giving them the confidence that I'm watching these things. So don't worry. It, you know, you don't need to panic if something does kind of, because I'm also on it. I am. That's good. So it's the airway. It's, you know, it's the <laughs> comfort of the patient that, you know, um, I had a situation actually um, helping out a doctor years ago and the implant was not, it, it didn't um, integrate. Mm. You know, you know, doctors, she's feeling it. She's feeling mm -hmm. it. Her face is kind of in, in a, in a, I'm trying to feel this mm -hmm. healing abutment. What she wasn't seeing was the whole implant was coming out. And oh. it was green. So I, I did give her a kick underneath the chair. And <laughs> it was quick, she was, you know, we were able to get that patient back to the periodontist. Everything was resolved, but so it does happen where it's like that could have been if I wasn't paying attention and she and I was looking just at her of mm -hmm. that she thing of removing this healing abutment and not looking at the patient that could have taken a lot longer or maybe caught her off in a more surprise yes the old way of like look what's happening mm -hmm. yeah not only is the assistant an extra pair of hands and even a left hand to the dentist but you're also an extra set of eyes right so it's really right important for the assistant to be alert alert yes exactly mm -hmm. okay now we come to number 10 ah <laughs> infection control i i wasn't going to put this one on my list because there's obviously you know when we spoke it was top 10 of my opinion mm -hmm. of uh, important and uh, there's so many things happening in but infection co it's a big one and you know it's the ownership of it, you know the supplies everything um, but just really understanding what you're trying to achieve. You know, I've gone to clinics, as you know, I've, uh, um, I sold medical emergencies. So there was an element of an infection control products. Um, sometimes people just don't understand why they're doing what they're doing. So I think you have to understand why are you doing the BIs? Like, why do you have a control versus, because I've seen um, the control not being um, activated. Mm. And just the process, um, not really understanding why are you putting a class five? When do you need a class five? When do you not? 
And so it's really understanding what are you trying to achieve? What equipment do you have? What tests are regulated? And create a really organized binder, but own it. This is, you know, uh, before all, <clears throat> all the uh, regulations kind of heightened, which wasn't new, um, none of it was new to me. I wasn't like, since I was in clinical um, and working in sales at that time, I was a little surprised that people were surprised. You know, uh, because a lot of it hasn't really changed. Uh, the documentation was a lot. That was the big one. That was the main, like, uh, and <clears throat> an increase of, you know, from mail out to BI, because that's been around since I was, you know, with you. That used mm-hmm. to be a and then it was mail in what created too much variable. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's why it, got, it went away. So then it was the daily, uh, weekly to the daily. So it's really... It's just showing that your equipment works well. And I just find with assistants, um, sometimes they're not always understanding. They were t- given a task to do, but a full understanding of uh, what's happening and why you're doing this. So, you know, there's some great companies doing some, uh, um, you know, uh, trainings for this. So I think, you know, if you're not 100%, reach out to some of these companies that are doing infection control. And, you know, there's some great knowledge out there and simplify it for yourself because, you know, during COVID, I, as you know, that I am assisting, loving it. So I'm helping out a friend and yeah, it's, it's not as, it, 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 once you understand the system, it's just documentation. A lot of it is just mainly documentation, but the infection control, uh, you know, even now with PPE with the patients, it's like, we've been always on top of this. This mm-hmm. is a whole been an important thing you know when when patients are noticing differences in the clinic it's like we've always been leaders in infection control now it's just stepped it up one extra notch with air purification so it's the air quality now that is a big focus but this has always been provided for you and you know some had to go back to it but it's always been in place so Mm -hmm. infection control what are you doing having you know your right supplies having the right stuff you know and because I've seen even, oh, this was a silly one. It was funny. Um, class fours were being put into um, a pouch, but the pouch is a class four. Mm-hmm. So, so that's where, it, like, that's where it's like, sometimes it's overkill is what I'm trying to say. Yes. It's not kill, but it's overkill. And it's just, what are you trying to achieve? Yeah, no, I like that. It's really important to understand not just IPAC, but even the materials and equipment that we're using, because if you understand it, you're not going to make mistakes. You don't have to think too much about it. Right. It just makes sense. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So thank you for your top 10 list, Alex. I'm sure you could have listed a lot more with all of your years of experience, (laughs) but that really highlighted the main things of a dental assistant. So thank you. Yes. Thank you.